threaded fastener uh, we will be discussing the design of threaded fastener in this uh, video the general applications uh, power transmission fasteners uh, uh, and minor adjustment power transmission as in lead screw and power uh, power screw etc fasteners to connect two different members and minor adjustment to, uh, as to level the things etc the threads which are generally used uh, unified american national si thread or uh, square thread or acme thread square thread and acme threads uh, they are used for power transmission and v thread is for general purpose uh, uh, uses <coughs> This is the nomenclature of a thread fastener. Uh, this is bolt and nut. The minor diameter, nominal diameter, major diameter, nominal diameter, one and same thing for bolt. And the minor diameter is the root is also root diameter. Pitch is the distance uh, uh, axial distance of two consecutive points on threads. The designation of a IS thread is like this uh, M10 multiplied by 1.25 or some figure where M stands for metric thread. T, uh, this uh, 10 is major diameter or nominal diameter, and this 1.25 is pitch. So, this is how the bolt is designated. It's the uh, last, if you see the last uh, column of this table, it is tensile stress area. And this is the uh, area which corresponds to assumed value of load where we uh, assume that this load is, uh, is supported. And it is given by the average of uh, the pitch diameter and minor diameter the area corresponding to average of this so this is tensile stress area we assume that failure is uh, taking along this and load is also acting on this two types of threads uh, coarse thread and fine thread this one we have the designation uh, the second uh, digit is there that after the uh, multiplication sign this is for fine thread if these are not there in M10, M12, then it is a coarse thread. The general application of coarse thread uh, is uh, mentioned here. The fine threads are used for finer application where vib vibration shocks are in general um, uh, the possibility in the application. In case of multi-start thread, uh, or uh, the let us uh, first discuss what is the different uh, uh, angles in a thread the lead angle and the helix angle are two major angle as shown here if we give one complete rotation this point travel from here to here and reaches to this point this distance is called as pitch or lead in case of single start thread pitch and lead both are same the angle this and uh, this set uh, in the complete rotation the travel is pi d1 that is the circumference of uh, the thread uh, the d1 is major diameter and this angle is helix angle which is uh, which is measured along the axis of a um, thread fastener in case of uh, multi start thread here it shows two uh, double start thread in this case the lead is number of start multiplied by pitch so for two uh, double start thread it is two multiplied by pitch so uh, the another important term that is bolt screw and stud that we use here in the case what is the difference between bolt screw and st uh, stud the bolt no doubt assembles uh, the different uh, element with the help of nut. We apply torque on the nut and there are two different members whereas in case of screw there is only single member and we apply torque on the uh, screw head and uh, the uh, th that that is why if you if lead screw and screw jack are named after the screw we apply torque on the uh, this uh, screw head 
not on there is no other component which is used to assemble this so stud is there is a threaded portion in two different part in both the cases here the threads are there only here in the upper uh, upper part and uh, this uh, here in this case the threads will be there uh, in the both part of this so here it it is uh, it's called as stud and no doubt uh, the torque is applied on the uh, uh, there is one nut which is used to tighten this uh, uh, stud the material used uh, there are different material we can use on the basis of the application and uh, the manufacturing method uh, the threads as we know we can cut threads by uh, machining or rolling but the rolling threads are stronger as it gives us uh, better fatigue properties because at the crust or the uh, at the root the uh, compressive stresses are induced in case of rolling the power screw thread threads uh, may be uh, grounded so that there is no um, you can say uh, possibility of any stress razor and you can we can uh, also cast thread so different materials we can use uh, 0.1 to 0.4 percent carbon uh, and, uh, for common application alloy steel for higher temperature and corrosive environment copper aluminium for special purpose free cutting steel for higher production rate on automatic uh, speed that is induced with uh, slightly higher uh, sulfur content in steel factor of safety used 2 to 3 uh, on the basis of yield strength uh, and 1.5 to 3 for alloy steel we can manufacture threads uh, we can manufacture thread using um, manual method uh, with the, the help of handle and tap we can um, also cut on the uh, single point with the help of lathe single point cutting tool and the mill or we can uh, use milling as well the uh, internal threads we can also make internal thread using single point cutting tool we can roll threads as uh, shown here this is also uh, rolling this is we can grind uh, threads we can use multiple grinder for um, uh, the multi star thread as well there is another important aspect in the case of bolt is the preloading of the bolt because when we uh, fasten two different members when we connect two different members the connection is ensured or clamp clamping force is uh, applied using the tightening of the nut when uh, we tighten this assembly using nut and bolt arrangement as shown here the in after initial tightening when we further extend uh, well, further tighten the nut on the bolt then the tensile uh, force is induced and this nut is elongated and this is uh, called the initial tightening or preloading tightening of nut induces tensile load in bolt and compressive load uh, uh, load in members of assembly external when we apply external load this increases load on the bolt and reduces load on the assembly because when you apply this p uh, load on the assembly it uh, further just some part of this load because of the flexibility or stiffness in this member some part of the load is taken up by the assembly and some part by the bolt uh, we can discuss uh, it is discussed in the detail for in another video where preloading is discussed in detail here we are only uh, in introducing this term preloading and discussing in brief <coughs> so uh, for rigid assembly the roll load will only induce deformation in bolt so now just see this pe is uh, taken up by assembly and by bolt and pb is uh, the load taken up by bolt is given by c into p where c is gasket coefficient and uh, here it should be 
PA, so it is wrongly mentioned. C is gasket coefficient and given by KB divided by K plus KB, where KA and KB are stiffnesses of assembly and bolt. And given by this, this is member 1, KA is the stiffness of member 1, here this is member 1. KG is the stiffness of gasket, KM2 is the stiffness of member 2. So this is how we can find out KA and then using this KA and KB, we can find value of C and that is gasket coefficient. And now if FI uh, was the initial load that we have induced while initial tightening of nut, then the total load on the bolt is FI plus PB. Now we can substitute this FI uh, PB is C uh, in, into P and F. And now if we see what is the load on the assembly, this is FI minus PA because initially we have this initial load, uh, tensile load in the bolt and compressive load in the assembly. So uh, when we apply external load, the portion of this external load PA is in the assembly and PB in the bolt. So here this bolt which was initial, the uh, assembly which was initially compressed will release some load for PA. So FA load on assemb uh, assembly is reduced and load on um, bolt is increased. <coughs> now we can uh, <coughs> make use of this uh, uh, aspect that if FA is less than 0, it means there is no load on the assembly. It means that there is separation between bolt and the assembly. And this load P which induces, uh, a, which, a, which reduces FA to 0 or less than 0, this load is known as P sep uh, separation load. And now we can Substitute the value and uh, find what is the value of C, uh, P separation and from here we can find out how much the sep uh, a factor we should consider for designing this load so that no separation is uh, taken place. So uh, this load is, uh, this factor is known as separation factor. This is given by P separation divided by P. P is the external load. P separation we can assume maybe 1.2 times of P or so that um, the N separation is 1.2 like that. So now we can use suppose 1 point N uh, separation then F bolt which we should use for designing bolt is given by this value where I, this is separation factor, gasket factor, external load and initial load. The initial load <coughs> is uh, also used to find out how much torque we have to apply so that that much amount of initial load is induced. This is given by KFI times T where K is uh, taken as 0.2 for dry surfaces and 0.15 for lubricated surfaces. The FI can also be obtained empirically that uh, FI is 2805 times D Newton where D is a nominal diameter or measure diameter in mm. This will give us how much initial load we can apply on any bolt. The modes of failure because we have to design a bolt for different modes of failure. So tensile is no doubt in general mode of failure uh, through the tensile stress area. And the load in that case can be designed uh, for only for simply axial stresses that is uh, FB is the load on the bolt uh, calculated uh, by using equations derived previously. If we are uh, neglecting stiffnesses in that case the external load is PB and <coughs> the other mode of failure is shear failure of bolt thread. If threads are failed uh, in shearing because we assume that the uh, load is uh, acting along the shear area, tensile shear area. So shear failure will also be along that area. Uh, so shear area of bolt thread is given by pi d3h because d3 is the lowest area. Here the uh, we can assume for uh, simplicity that load is acting here, the shear load is acting here and in 
shear failure uh, of nut thread is given by this shear thread shear area of nut thread so here the shear failure will take place along this uh, d1 area so it is uh, pi d1 h where h is the height of uh, thread in the nut because if it means it is height of nut uh, as such so <coughs> so uh, here this pi d1 h is more than pi d3 h so in, uh, it means that if at all shear uh, the threads will fail the threads will fail in bolt not in nut because the shear resistance here is more as compared to the shear resistance of bolt thread so that is why the shear failure will be in the bolt uh, if nut and bolt are made of same material the threads of bolt uh, will fail first because we already discussed and if we want that uh, the bolt thread and the bolt uh, in axial uh, this tensile failure equally strong and assuming the tensile failure is along the section along core, core diameter to just uh, simplify the calculation now in that case the, so this is the capacity or the load carrying capacity of uh, bolt in uh, tensile mode of failure uh, given by this equation and this is the uh, load carrying capacity of bolt in shear mode of failure so using this we can uh, and assuming that uh, tau d is 0.5 times of sigma d uh, h we get is 0.5 times of d3 and so generally we take h as 0.8 times d1 it means that the height of nut is to be taken as 0.8 times d1 it means that if we take this much height of a, a nut which is the more than what we have uh, obtained here twice more than this it means we are making uh, this area pi d3 more as compared to the bolt strength uh, the uh, in uh, bolt capacity in tensile mode of failure it means if we take nut height as the threads will not fail uh, in a shear so if at all if it means we are making uh, threads stronger as compared to the uh, nut as compared to uh, bolt in tensile mode of failure so here we have some empirical relations uh, for calculating number of uh, uh, bo uh, bolts pipe joint this uh, these are different empirical relations mm. and then to make it leak proof we have some relations for uh, pitch as well so if uh, these are the number of uh, bolts how these bolts are to be arranged that is the pitch how it should be the minimum distance between these two to make it leak proof the design stresses the bolt uh, uh, subjected to tensile load without initial and sub subsequent tightening we use uh, sigma d uh, so it by n otherwise we use proof stresses uh, uh, and sigma d is taken as 0 0.8 times sut 0 0.6 times syt for this uh, with initial preload and without subsequent tightening otherwise we can go ahead with the uh, factor of safety as well so that is also so uh, in case of the uh, as assembly of two different component we can classify the bolt fasteners problem in three different categories uh, depending on what is the orientation of load with respect to the bolt that we are uh, uh, using so uh, first case is when bolt uh, ac this load axis is parallel to the bolt axis <clears throat> so in this case uh, the this load will try to tilt uh, this particular uh, bracket about this point or about this edge cd so if we consider the deformation pattern in that case we as uh, we see that there this deformation is this here this deformation is this and uh, otherwise we first we can discuss that why we need this deformation pattern because uh, to find out how much force is acting in each and every bolt 
uh, we need to transfer load this is one thing to the cg of the bolt geometry first thing and even that will not help to find out how much load is transferred to each and every bolt so for that uh, and this uh, the number of equations that uh, will be available to us using static equilibrium equations they will be less uh, to find out the unknown forces on the bolt so that is why uh, in such cases this uh, in such case this uh, problem becomes statically indeterminate and we have to use uh, the equations of compatibility uh, those equations of compatibility are obtained using the deformation pattern we know from our basic uh, knowledge of strength of material or statics so that is why we are using this we have to use this deformed shape to uh, uh, obtain or to derive or to classify uh, or to relate the deformation pattern with force so this is uh, how we uh, see the deformed uh, po portion and then now we can find out how they are deformed so um, when we shift this force f to the cg at this point of this uh, uh, bolt geometry we f force as it is it is uh, shifted here and one couple will also be there that is uh, this e is uh, not correct here e should be measured from the uh, cg so so let it uh, this uh, so let us correct this first and then we will proceed because e we have to measure from the CG let me select a pen and this if this is the CG then E should be measured from this so this is the value of E we'll be shifting this force to the uh, this uh, CG and then A is measured from this so this is not correct so coming back to this so this f uh, uh, is uh, f load is here this f load is equally shared by all the bolts because you have shifted to cg and then f into e couple is there which is trying to tilt this which is acting here so we can uh, now see from the deformed shape that the secondary force that is represented by double dash and here single dash is representing primary force so the primary and secondary forces are simply named we can represent by simple dash single dash and double dash we have two forces two effects so f1 is the f1 dash is the effect of force and this f1 double dash is the effect of the couple so we can see from here that this deformation uh, is uh, is directly proportional to the distance this is lower deformation here it is higher deformation the distance uh, from uh, the pot tilting point to the uh, bolt number three and four is less the distance is from tilting point to load number one and two is more so here we can write down this uh, is directly proportional to the different lengths so we can now uh, derive these relations and we can find the, in the both the cases where the, whether it is secondary force or primary force or f1 dash or f double dash and other forces it uh, all are along the axis all are acting along the axis of bolt and inducing uh, axial deformation so that is why it is only the axial uh, for axial stress will be there so this represents the state of stress on bolt in appropriate uh, direction we can show it along the you know, vertical as well uh, rather than this so the design uh, the design equation will be this where we have to take the maximum of these f1 f2 f3 f4 where f1 f2 they are given by this so this is how we can find out the we can design the board the next case when the 
load acting perpendicular to the bolt axis again uh, this is the bolt axis this is load perpendicular to each other the deformed position uh, to find out the forces again we can take here in this case uh, uh, we shift this force through the cg again here to this point and it means that the force f will be there which is acting in this direction vertical downward direction and then one force and one couple which is acting in this plane so and this couple will try to tilt this about this point so now we have two things this vertical force will try to shear it off the uh, bolt shear it off the bolts so this uh, will induce shear stresses and this couple which is uh, trying to tilt this about this will elongate the bolts so that is why it will induce uh, direct uh, axial stress tensile stress so we have two stresses one is shear stress another is normal stress so state of stress in this case is given by this as we know whenever we have biaxial state of stress we have to use theory of failure for designing such components so in this case we have to use theory of failure for designing the bolt you can use maximum shear stress theory or maximum principal stress theory to design this the third case is when bolt load is acting in the plane of the bolt so this is the case we can transfer this load from here to the cg of the bolt or rivet geometry so this is how we can represent force and couple and we can this f will be equally shared by all the bolts or rivets and this will try to tilt it uh, twist it the complete plate uh, about uh, this as center and it will apply some force on this so we have two type of forces one acting downward which is equally shared with the f divided by the number of bolt and then this tangential radial uh, the tangential force measured from this to this so uh, this force uh, the uh, denoted by f double dash or secondary force can be obtained uh, using this if we have this cg and the rivet if some rivet or bolt is uh, uh, situated here it will be it will undergo more deformation as compared to this so that is why here the force will be induced more the resisted uh, this the resistance offered by bolt or rivet will be more as compared to the resistance offered which is nearer to the cg so it means we have more stresses induced here uh, near the uh, which is farther from the cg so now we can uh, write this so uh, secondary force will be directly proportional to radial distance so that is why we can have this type uh, this uh, these expressions to find out primary force and secondary forces and in this case both forces are acting in the same plane but different direction so that is why the resultant of these forces are to be obtained using a parallelogram law as uh, given by this so this is the state of stress because only in plane shear is there so in plane shear stress will be induced the tau is f by a where f is maximum of these four so we can find out design this like this so uh, next is bolt of uniform strength uh, we know that shank diameter is uh, same as nominal diameter and tensile stress in the th threaded portion is high due to reduced diameter as shown here so the stresses will be more because uh, there are two uh, reasons for that one is it is reduced diameter another is we have the stress flow flow lines which is uh, uh, going down here and then coming going down uh, coming and these acts as discontinuity and stress are concentrated even here there are two reasons one is the diameter is less secondary that uh, induces stress concentration as well so the stress is uh, here uh, we get more and if impact is uh, uh, the kind of load if, if impact kind of loading is there this is adversely affected because all strain energy absorbed here is uh, 
very large as compared to this because it is a sigma square so it, it is uh, adversely affected so to reduce uh, to avoid this uh, we want uh, that the stresses induced here and stresses here uh, should be uh, approximately same that is the meaning of a bolt of uniform strength that the load carrying capacity of bolt in this portion and load carrying capacity of bolt in the shank portion should be same to have load carrying capacity of uh, this portion and threaded portion and threaded portion we reduce the load carrying capacity of uh, this to make it a bolt of equal, uh, equal uh, uniform strength and we have two options one is we can reduce uh, the shank diameter or we can drill a hole as here we can reduce the shank diameter which is approximately equal to the uh, root diameter or we can drill hole like this up to the threaded portion so that the threaded uh, and this uh, diameter we can calculate by calculating the load carrying capacity along this and this it both should be same so this is how we can design a bolt of uniform sex uh, uniform strength and these are used where dynamic or impact loading is there as in case of connecting road foundation board you can fix etc so thank you thank you for watching this video please subscribe share and like if you liked it and visit www.engineeringinfo.in to download notes uh, or pdf thank you